Good afternoon to you, Mr. Kwabna Nketia, the Executive Director of the Ghana YMCA. And thank you for joining this call to discuss COVID-19 in relation to the context of Ghana YMCA. Good afternoon, welcome. Good afternoon and thank you very much. Good. I mean, let me ask the first question that, uh, I mean, most people may ask, you know, in terms of location, please, where are you talking to us from? Well, I'm also uh, at home uh, due to the lockdown since uh, the beginning of uh, the pronouncement by the president. So I'm working from home. Okay, that's good to hear. Please, what is your general thought on COVID-19? All right, thank you very much. Um, I think it's a dangerous disease, uh, which we all know has become a pandemic now. And it requires that we take every information and direction provided by our health authorities and the government uh, very seriously. We have been informed about how it can infect a person through the mouth, eyes, and nose. And that's some people side we refer to as avoid men. So it is something that it's uh, very dangerous. We need to take it seriously. But it's also important to note that um, it is a disease which uh, the health authorities can manage it. And so it is not something that should put us out of uh, our normal uh, behavior in terms of uh, uh, people even stigmatizing those who have uh, contacted the disease and all that. It's important we go through the various uh, protocols that have been outlined, which can easily lead to someone who even contacted uh, getting a full recovery, as we've heard from our numbers this morning from the Ministry of Information that currently Ghana, we have uh, 17 people who have uh, fully recovered. Uh, so it's quite a good news. It is not all gloomy. There are positives that we can take uh, from this uh, COVID-19. Okay. okay. There's no doubt that all over the world, every country has been affected and every organization you know, is facing some kind of uh, impact as a result of COVID-19. In the context of the Ghana YMCA, you as the leader of our movement here in Ghana, what can you say has been the impact to the Ghana YMCA? Well, um, I would say that the impact in terms of uh, financial figures, especially relating to our 2020 budget, is still being reviewed. But as we speak now, I can share with you that all our YMCA facilities are closed. Uh, our hostels and guest houses in Accra, Kofuidia, Konongo, and Boalishi are all closed. Uh, the only staff at post now are our security personnel. All other staff are working from home. Again, uh, you would recall that we usually have uh, German interns who work with us for a year, and uh, those who were currently with us uh, started work in August 2019 and they were supposed to have completed their internship with us in uh, June uh, 2020. But uh, they have all been recalled back home since uh, the second week of March 2020. We had four German interns, two were operating at our school in Impraiso, and two were also operating at our school in Takrade. They've all been recalled. We also had the opportunity of receiving for the first time uh, France volunteers uh, this year, and they also were supposed to stay for a similar period, but they've all also been recalled back home. All our other uh, projects have also come to a halt. Uh, for example, our Media Education Hub project, which uh, we were implementing uh, a three-year project. It was dubbed the Rivi and Liberia, 
and mostly our facilitators were from Germany, uh, German professionals from our partner organization, veldfelmer.org. And so all of these projects, as I speak to you, have come to a standstill. And this tells you how uh, impactful uh, the COVID-19 has had on, on our organization in the, in the Ghana contest. I see, thank you very much. From this submission, it is very clear that the Ghana YMC is uh, not in normal times. How is your leadership approaching these issues? You have mentioned how, I mean, the financial figures, you know, are taking a uh, decline and how activities have been, you know, largely impacted. How is your leadership addressing these challenges? I realize in the review of our projections uh, for the year, financial projections for the year, because obviously we would not be able to um, rake in the incomes that we were expecting. And so we would have to accordingly cut down some of our expenditure, which would require us to have uh, especially uh, provided the funding from our internally generated sources like our hostels and guest houses and schools and all that. Uh, again, um, we are also trying to put together a platform which probably early tomorrow we would share some modalities on that in terms of uh, raising funding. Uh, last Friday, uh, last uh, Easter, uh, Good Friday, we had uh, had a meeting with the national officers and uh, they gave me a number of directives which I'm ruling out, uh, which would include us raising funds to support the effort of uh, um, combating the COVID-19 in Ghana. Uh, we've also um, approached a couple of our partners, including Bread for the World, presenting a proposal on how we would want to support uh, the needy, especially the homeless, uh, those who are street children and women in, in the country, with some uh, support in terms of uh, providing them with feeding and in some instances, if it is possible, provide some shelter as well. We also looking at the possibility of supporting with the provision of uh, PPEs. Uh, we've received a consignment uh, from the USA. We're currently working on tax exemptions, which is um, currently receiving approval at both the Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Trade. Once that is received, we will go to the port and clear the container and distribute those items to the health authorities for them to give to the appropriate uh, first line respondents who would need uh, these items. And so I would say that currently these are some of the major measures. And also you can also note that on our social media platforms, we continue to provide information on the prevention and also some of the um, uh, replications of people who are especially providing or sending around fake news as you would notice from the media presentation by the Minister of Information today and some of the police authorities, uh, there are laws that uh, can be applied to uh, for far of providing false information uh, in terms of circulating false information on the COVID-19 that uh, we need to all be careful of what we read and what we share. Uh, you don't have any excuse to say that I only forwarded. It is your responsibility to verify the source and you do so. And once you have shared it, you should also be re ready to, to face uh, whatever repercussions that would uh, come after that. Thank you very much. There is no doubt that very soon the world will be on its way to recovery. If you watch the figures coming from the US, the curve is now being flattening. Uh, Spain is talking about how to loosen grip on the restriction. Uh, organizations, hospitals, laboratories have advanced uh, you know, their progress in terms of vaccines. So clearly the world is on its way to recovery and soon we will come you know, out of this. How, what can you say about the YMCA's resilient preparedness in the future? I'm talking about Ghana YMCA, things that we need to put in place and even 
uh, examples across the world to ensure that we'll be resilient you know, to address uh, challenges when they come in the near future. Thank you. Well, um, I would say that uh, most of the way we handle things are going to change, uh, especially even in, in terms of how uh, we engage as individuals, knowing our cultural background and how closely we engage as a people. And so I believe uh, within the country and also within the YMCA, we are not going to do things as use of um, observing signs uh, observing some social distance in public or people even who might be experiencing some form of uh, ailment would probably happen. So these are all things that also within the YMCA contest would also be observing. Uh, our meetings might not have be uh, as uh, we have been having them in terms of personal contact. I mean, uh, as we are having this uh, meeting now uh, from our various locations, uh, we have, uh, when I say we, um, I'm referring to the national officers of Ghana YMC uh, since last year, April, have been using this method of meeting because, you know, looking at uh, the location of the uh, board or the national officers, sometimes it is difficult to have our monthly meetings. And so, we came to a conclusion last April that it's important that we continue to find a way of engaging, if, even when we don't have the opportunity to do the face-to-face. -face. And so um, uh, Easter or Good Friday we, was the last meeting that we just held. And they gave their directive in terms of the way forward. And we used uh, the Zoom platform. And so um, we would continue to use it as much as possible because even in the process of rolling out some of the activities that we have um, uh, in terms of revising our, our strategic plan, uh, we would call on some of the regional leadership to engage with the consultant using this uh, medium. And so I think it is going to be part of the feature that we're going to um, adopt. Again, uh, uh, the issue of an emergency fund has been discussed over and over, but this uh, pandemic is going to give us uh, the uh, needed impetus to put it in place. Um, uh, for those of you, I see Robert online, uh, if he would recall, uh, during uh, the last national uh, board meeting, uh, when the budget was presented, uh, there was region and the national office to set aside a certain percentage of income that will be generated this year. That's 10% uh, coincide with this pandemic and it really even reinforces that decision that was taken at the finance and personal meeting, which was also approved by the board. And so uh, this these are some of the things that I think uh, we're going to reinforce. I mean, uh, some of the protocols, like maybe all our facilities having these Veronica buckets and soap uh, for people to wash their hands are going to be a feature that will be seen in all our facilities. And I believe as we learn the best practices out of what has been uh, this uh, pandemic, uh, we will adopt some of them and continue to improve in that the World Alliance of YMCA has um, developed uh, a COVID-19 hub where there are a number of resources uh, all over the world that have been shared there. How, uh, for example, the North America YMCs that depend mainly on their gyms and swimming pools in raising money have had to adapt in providing online services for their membership and clients to um, pay to access online. And so even though people are not going to the gyms in, in some of these uh, YMCAs, but their trainers are providing some of these services online, but it might not be the same, but these are some of the things that are coming up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The Ghana YMCA, 
is part of the global movement of YMCAs with 175 years rich history. We have been through wars. We have been through pandemics, crisis. From your the information that you are gathering around the world, how are your colleagues, and by saying your colleagues, how are YMCAs around the world dealing with this pandemic? You have given a few examples. Can you go a little bit deeper and bring into the discussion how the World Alliance itself is also responding to this crisis as recalled or required by a global organization? Yeah, so um, it is also country specific, as, as you, you know, we are currently in 120 countries. And um, I think um, exactly a week ago, we had a meeting again through Zoom of, of the World YMCA's 100 participants uh, that was hosted by our Secretary General Carlos Sambi. And uh, from what we heard, mostly in North Americans, after closing down some of their facilities, um, they have laid staff off. Uh, UK, they have slashed salaries. Uh, they are fortunate to be receiving support from their government, that's UK. And so it's helping them to still maintain some of the work that they are doing. And uh, if you also are aware, uh, the UK YMCA's provide a lot of shelter for persons from uh, uh, challenged homes, like uh, people who have received uh, abuse in the house or have parents who have uh, been identified as uh, suffering from the use of uh, alcohol and uh, let's say hard drugs. And so they provide this kind of shelter. So this is also an opportunity for them to provide support to the homeless who are suffering from the pandemic. And so some of them are receiving a lot of government support uh, in terms of how they can uh, be able to overcome the effects of the pandemic. But more importantly, in our contest, I think, uh, as I said, once the budget is reviewed and it's presented to the national officers, uh, decisions will be taken and uh, we'll continue to share with all our uh, regions and constituents uh, within the, the YMCA family. Thank you. I, I'll put two more questions to you, then I'll open the floor for our participants to uh, also have the opportunity to ask you questions. And let us move from uh, COVID-19 a little. I have seen the newsletter from the Ghana YMCA. I think this is a very phenomenal work and I must uh, applaud your leadership for that. Can you please walk us through a few of the activities that has taken place in the last six months that has taken uh, so much uh, good space in the, in the uh, what do you call it, the newsletter to see, thank you. All right, thank you. So um, if you take us all the way back to the last six months, I would say that significantly the last quarter of uh, 2019 uh, was quite eventful in the sense that uh, uh, Ghana YMCA was um, privileged to be afforded the opportunity to host the Ghana Tech Summit, uh, which brought over 100 leaders from all over the world, including Ghanaian professionals in the IT and entrepreneurs, uh, to engage with young people in the country and all over the world uh, when it comes to eco startups. And so uh, it was one of the key things that we were able to do. Again, uh, in the last quarter, around the same time, we had a team from our media hub uh, been, uh, having received support from the Swedish YMCA, go to Togo, to um, um, produce a documentary on the youth justice project that has been run and sponsored by the YMC of Sweden, YMC, YWC of Sweden. And uh, we, we've worked on the documentary, presented the first draft to the Swedish partners and they are giving our feedback and we are almost through with uh, those uh, revisions uh, had it not been the um, lockdown. Um, again, in the, in the beginning of the year, yes, as I mentioned, we've had our uh, first board meeting. Um, one of the um, novelties that the national officers have introduced is to try to um, gradually bring in all the past leaders. And so um, we were able to invite uh, the former president, Kwame Jima, uh, Mr. Kofi Amowa, Mr. Lakain, 
to join the national officers meeting just before the national officers meeting uh, sorry that board meeting which we held uh, in february and this is going to continue so other leaders would also be invited to join uh, the officers meeting and it was just to brief them on the reports that we're going to present to the board or the neck as we used to call it and so this is going to be a feature that will be ongoing we invite new people stories from the different uh, branches and regions and that is what we put uh, in the in the in the newsletter we received uh, how western region or takra they, they were helping young people who are in hostels learn grooming and this was even before the COVID pandemic became quite a challenge. And you know that um, the basic observance of uh, good sanitary uh, conditions is, is a way of preventing oneself of contracting this COVID-19. And so it was great to see that, that uh, especially the youth leadership of uh, that uh, Western Regional YMCA uh, uh, this project up which they have informed me is going with regional leadership because when they were elected I was outside the country and used the opportunity to give them orientation on the various roles and also had the opportunity of the, about five branches that were present uh, during that meeting. Um, we've had a communication meeting which we are, were fortunate to also have the um, representation of the regional and national youth leadership being part of that communication meeting. And it looked at revising the way we communicate within the YMC because earlier on we had shared some questionnaires for input on how we can improve on our communication because last year we realized it was one of the major challenges or uh, the major feedback that we were getting communication at all levels. So we were trying to improve that and we're working on that strategy. We'll get it out uh, to everybody to make input when we get to the state where we can share. At the same time, we use the opportunity to also review our strategic plan. You know, our strategic plan ended two years But we were working, it was time to roll it out. Again, we at the at the communication workshop, we had the consultant engage with the youth uh, at the meeting there and also the regional uh, managers who were present and the nationals give us feedback on the questionnaire that he had received and had started uh, putting together. So I'll say these are some of the areas that uh, the newsletter for the first first quarter captures there is more and it can be found on our social media and our websites for for further reading yeah thank you thank you thank you very much let me apologize for the network it is a subject that we need to return to to discuss holistically in the near future but thank you for the submission yes it is now time to open the floor for our participants to welcome Questions to you, and I see here Robert Atty, who is to be the Vice President of the Greater Accra Region. I see here Joel Nijo, who is the former President of uh, the Youth uh, Branch of the YMC. I see Sarah, who happens to be the former Director, and of course Timothy. Della has joined us. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please, you can now put your questions. Uh, let me see who has hands raised. Okay, Joe, please, you have the floor. Joe, please, you have the floor. After Joe, I'll take Robert. Joe, please, I'm okay. trying to Thank you, sir. Good, good. You have the floor. Yeah, sorry, thanks for the opportunity. Um, I think, Fred, I must. 
yes, I said thank, thanks for the opportunity. And I think uh, I must commend that this is very innovative and this is a good way for all of us, especially to come to the level Perkins of how the wine is actually performing amidst this pandemic. Um, ED, I must say, yes, it's impressive to hear what the wines here, um, Ghana and beyond, are planning or are doing towards, uh, uh, amidst this pandemic. My question, especially which will focus on the Ghana wines here, I want to know, because you said um, you were awaiting budget from uh, the board for them to present budgets before we can take pragmatic actions. I want to know what are the timelines because sincerely, um, the sickness waits for no, nobody now. It's actually killing, and people are actually uh, they're talking about the PPEs. Even in terms of awareness, um, you watch news uh, um, at so called Jamestown, which is closer to the head office. People really don't believe that really this virus is real. What are the measures, the immediate measures the Ghana YNC is taking? So that we we'll add our voices to the other NGOs to make sure this pandemic actually doesn't spread like it's spreading. Are we still waiting for the board to approve? Or how, if we can get, I want us to get okay. maybe something we can measure with. So okay. if you can give us that. Sure, sure. thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. And I, I was thinking this, this, your beard is a part of the code. Uh, Isolation, but we'll come to that. So, yes, we have a all right, so I would say that um, it's not, Joel, it's not necessarily in terms of our response that we are waiting for approval of the board. I mentioned earlier that we have been doing uh, education on, on the pandemic using mostly our platforms. You know, now because of um, the lockdown, if you are not classified as uh, an essential worker, it's not easy to move around. Um, I also mentioned that we have received some PPEs that we are trying to clear from the port. Usually, we receive equipment and uh, sometimes we get it as part of people's uh, uh, consignment. So the people would clear them from the port and then we would be given our portion. But this time, we're, we received a full container of PPEs before the COVID-19. And so we have to clear it. You know the challenge with funds. So we had to go through the process of um, uh, applying for exemption, which you know, even in this uh, very challenging times, uh, our bureaucracy is not fast tracking anything at all. And okay. so, yes, fortunately we are at the last stage where it's with the finance Okay. and trade ministry and once we get it hopefully this week or early next week we would uh, do the distribution and that okay. would even give us give us the opportunity to go into town and pro okay thank you thank you very much i see harrison again joining us you welcome harrison now robert please you have the floor uh, we are not waiting us to raise funds yeah okay. thank you Okay, Robert, you have the floor, please. Hello. 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 Yes, I think that the business is you. Thank you for this meeting. Um, thank you very much for this initiative. I think it is very comfortable. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. Please go ahead. Robert, we can hear you. Okay, so what I want to ask is, um, we're in the middle of developing our strategy for the next five years. We're in the middle of developing our plan for the next five years. And unfortunately, this has come in and it's going to affect the table the timetable as was scheduled. Um, what are the backup plans that we are putting in place so that considering how um, the timetable for the strategic plan is going to be affected, we can still be able to, to, to be able to get the strategic plan um, completed and then we will have it to roll out. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Robert. 
Um, I must say that I mentioned earlier, um, giving us. Robert, can you probably mute your mic now so that it becomes easier? But um, one of the ways that we're trying to adopt is um, through what we are doing now. Um, Friday, the last year, Friday, I had a meeting with the officers and I was tasked to engage with all the regions together with the, um, the consultant on how we can use probably uh, this medium to be able to, our time is up, unfortunately. I don't know how long uh, Rob, uh, Cedric programmed this. Cedric, can you? We, we, we have about five minutes more to end this call. So I'll take okay. two questions after this. Then. So just to say that we try everything within our means especially receiving uh, through also uh, the Zoom to use uh, the opportunity to complete the uh, strategic plan as fast as we can. Definitely, we're going to miss some of the months this year, but what we can do is probably to adjust ourselves such that uh, we'll consider uh, the, the start of, of the, the strategic plan probably for next year instead of this year, because we would use part of this year to complete it and then in terms of implementing we don't know when the lockdown would even be over that we can be out there doing work as normal which will allow us to probably implement as fast as we can so that's that is uh, the current response but we could engage further on other platforms to to get uh, more feedback so that we can get another person the opportunity to ask questions okay thank you Please, we have the opportunity to put two more questions to our director before we close. Let me know who has the desire to ask questions, please. Mr. Yim, Harrison, I see you. Please, do you have any intervention? Hello, Cedric. Yes, Harrison. On the floor. Cedric, I have a question. Okay, Robert, please go ahead. Robert, go ahead, please. Robert, please go ahead. Um, no, before, no, 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 no. Before, before Robert comes in, I think I've seen that Sarah sent a question. Okay. Cedric, can you let Robert hold on? Uh, okay, Robert, Sarah please. has sent a question that he, she typed. Okay, okay. So that we, I can probably okay. um, respond to that quickly. Okay, we have four minutes. So we don't sure. miss her out because she sent a question. She okay. is asking whether the PPEs at the port awaiting clearance are for only our YMCA sphere or there is the intention to also support some health centers, especially since we are neighbors to the psychiatric, for example. Yeah, so I would say that the PPEs actually, in terms of the donors who were given to us, we're not talking about the YMC. The YMC, for those of you who probably might know, we have a small clinic in the Volta region in a community called Akpafu Domi. So that was the probably the only facility or the only YMC that we were going to necessarily give them some of the PPEs. But the PPEs were mainly for health institutions. And so looking at our current situation, then we are going to give it to the hospitals, like she mentioned, probably Ridge Hospital, which is one of the centers for um, what do we call it, uh, the COVID-19, and as she also mentioned, the psychiatric, which is just next to us. But looking at the way people are trying to support um, speaking to the board, once we clear, we'll probably take a final decision on it, whether to hand everything over to the health ministry, because we would want it to go to the place where it will be needed most. I think in the current circumstance, it is about where would the support of YMCA help most in terms of curbing uh, the spread of 
the COVID-19. So I, don't, I hope uh, Sarah was able to hear me if she could either type a response or send, uh, unmute her mic and make a response. I would appreciate it. Whether she's heard me and she's okay with the response. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, of course, she has responded. Thanks, ED. Great initiative then. Thank That's you. Good. So as we wait for Sarah, probably, said um, okay. Robert. Okay, Robert, the... please. You have the floor. Thank you, Sarah, for uh, your contribution. Okay, thank you. This is just a quick one. Um, one of the key programs in Akalana for this year is a national youth conference. So far, we haven't got any official communication in that regard. Should we assume that, considering the impact of the COVID, we may as well not have the conference for this year, since national has a certain portion of the budget to fund the program. Thank you. All right. Uh, quickly, I would say that I think at the last board meeting, it was mentioned that uh, we should get ready for the youth conference because it, at that time, the COVID had not become so pronounced, even for us to have the lockdown. Uh, as you rightly mentioned, we have to get ready, but even as we get ready, we should also know that uh, depending on whether after the lockdown, uh, the government will allow such gatherings as huge as we have our numbers, usually 100 plus. And so we would weigh all of this, but notwithstanding, we, we are in touch with the, um, the, the committee, uh, the local organizing committee that lies again here. Our first national officers meeting this year was held in a conference call like that, but I happened to have traveled to Takrade with Dela on, uh, before we had that meeting. So I was with Dela in Takrade when we met the regional leadership and the youth leadership to orient them because they were newly elected. And also we used the opportunity because George specifically joined me because he wanted to know what, how ready the region was in terms of hosting this year's youth conference and then if there was the need to. So he had a extensive meeting with the youth leaders aside and the regional manager as well as together we all had. So yes, even though probably follow-up messages uh, might not have come, it is something that we are still hoping that when the lockdown is over and there is no restriction on uh, the, the, the congregation of loud, uh, sorry, large numbers, then we can go ahead and have it. So it is something that we, we, we hoping once the government doesn't put a ban on such gatherings, we will do everything to host it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, this is where time will allow us, sorry, this is where time will allow us and I want to personally thank Robert, Della, Harrison, Joa, Sarah and Timothy. And of course, you are executive director for attending upon this call. There's no denying the fact that it has become important in using such platforms to not only catch up, but to inform and to make progress. This is a very great initiative and all of you have made it very fruitful. I'm looking forward to such similar engagements in the coming weeks so we can continue to share ideas and keep each other updated. This video will be loaded to YouTube and then saved for others who would want to watch later. Thank you so much and God bless you all. Stay blessed and stay at home. Thank you.